Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're doing our next example of how to find the volume uh, created by taking an area um, defined by two equations. So here we have uh, a straight line, y equals x, a parabola, y equals x squared, and so they intersect in two places and they bound an area. If we take that area now and we rotate it about the x-axis, we end up with some sort of cone volume that has a varying thickness wall. So think of a cone sticking out the, where the wall is very thin at the edges and thick in the center. And I've kind of tried to draw that here, not have very good drawing skills, but here we go. That's kind of what it looks like. And we're trying to find the volume of that. How do you do that? Well, the best thing to do is to find a small dv, a small little volume section of that. And the best way to draw that is to draw it vertically. And the reason is because that way the lengths are always uh, differentiated between the straight line and the curve of the parabola. What I mean with that is if we draw a small little section like this, we take a small little slice. Remember this is in 3D, three-dimensional, you end up with a washer. Let me try to draw the washer over here. It'll look like this. And there we go, a little thickness to it. Like so. Okay, so there's a little washer that we get by slicing this volume. And the thickness of that would be this right here. So it would be the thickness that is dx. And so the thickness of that would be a small little dx right there. And then the radius, so we have an inner radius, let's call that r1, and an outer radius, let's call that r2. Notice, how does that correspond to my drawing here? Well, from the center, which is right here, I have an inner radius, which goes to there, which is r1, and an outer radius, which goes to there, which is an r2. So now we have to determine what those inner and outer radiuses are in terms of x and y. So let's try to do that. Uh, we have, we call this the dv, a small little volume, which is equal to the surface area of that, uh, of that disk or that washer times the thickness, which is dx. And so the area of this would be equal to pi times the outer radius squared, so that would be r2 squared minus pi times r1 squared, so that would be the area of the disk minus the area of the hole, and multiply that times dx, the thickness of it, that will give you the volume of this washer, and so that can be written as pi times r2 squared minus r1 squared times dx. So that's a small little volume. And you'll probably already guess what we're going to do. We're going to then integrate all those little washers all the way from here to there. So that's a summation. That's what we call an integration. Well, we can't use the variables r. We have to replace that with the variables in x and y. So the distance from there to there is simply distance from 0 to the curved line, which is this y right there. So let's call that y1. And so we can then say that r1 is equal to the distance from the x-axis to the parabola, which is defined as uh, y1. So this can be written as pi times y1 squared. And then r2, oh, is that, no, oh, sorry, I'll take that back. I've got r2 there. So I was talking about r1, so that would be minus y1 squared dx. So I replaced r1 by y1, which is correct right here. So r1 would be the distance to the curved line, which is this function right here, which is y1. And r2 is a distance to the straight line, which is my function right here. Let's call that y2. Instead of writing r2, I can write y2. So y2 squared. So now I have defined my small volume, my dv, in terms of y and dx. Of course, I still can't integrate it this way because y is, of course, a y value. Uh, a variable and x is an x variable, you can integrate y's and x in the same integral. Uh, unless, of course, you do a double integral, but that's not what we're doing here. So now we have to replace y1 and x1 by what they are in terms of the x variable. So y1 is x squared and y2 is x, so this is equal to pi times y2 uh, can be written as x, and that's then squared, minus y1. y1 is x squared, and of course that's squared as well dx. So finally we can say that this is equal to pi times x squared minus x to the fourth power dx. And now we have our small dv, our small volume element, this little washer, expressed in terms of x, the x variable, and we're now able to integrate that so we can find the total volume. So the total volume v will be equal to the integral, which means the sum of all the little slices. If we slice it all up, all the way from x equals 0, all the way to x equals 1, we add them all up, we get the total volume 
of this structure right here. So volume is going to be integral of all the dv's, which is the integral from x equal, start at 0, to x equals, where they cross, which is at 1, and our dv is equal to pi. I can take the pi outside the integral sign. I can put the pi in front because it's a constant, times the quantity x squared minus x to the fourth times dx. And now I'm ready to integrate. So when I integrate that, uh, this is equal to, uh, that would be x cubed over 3. Remember, you add one the exponent, divide by the no exponent, minus x to the fifth over 5. The whole thing evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals 1, which is equal to, when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 over 3, because, of course, 1 cubed is still 1, minus 1 over 5. And when then we subtract the lower limits, we plug in zeros, we simply get zero, so it would be minus zero plus zero. There we go. And so finally, we then know it's one-third minus one-fifth. We have to put that over the same common denominator. Ooh, and I can't forget my pi here. Uh, let's see, let me move this out a little bit. Equals pi times. We can't forget the pi, that is still there, so we still need to put a pi in front there. There we go. Okay, and so now we Sum these up together over the common denominator, so this is pi times uh, over 15 would be the common denominator. And since 3 goes into 15 5 times, we write 5 over 15. And 5 goes into 15 3 times, so 3 times 1 is 3 over 15. So finally we can say that this is equal to 2 over 15 times pi, and that would be the volume of that strange little contraption by taking this area, which is bounded by those two equations, and we, circum uh, we, uh, we uh, uh, rotate it all about the x-axis to get the structure right here, and the volume of that structure would be equal to 215 pi. And the whole trick is to simply slice it up, take a little slice, imagine that little slice will be a little disk that has a hole in it, so it's kind of like a washer, which has an inner radius and an outer radius. The inner radius is the distance from the x-axis to the equation y equals x squared, that would be the parabola, let's call that y1. So instead of r1, we can write y1 like that. And the outer radius is r2, which is distance from the x-axis all the way to the straight line, which is y2 equals x. And now finally we replace the y1 and y2 by what they're equal to in terms of x, and then we integrate. And that's how we do that.